Good morning, everyone. It's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art, and we're going to paint the Tree of Life painting this morning. Welcome virtual art retreat members, and I'm also streaming this into my Tinker's Cartist group. So it's great to see you this morning. This is a super fun, easy painting. It's so simple. You'll be very surprised. You don't need a lot of colors, but you can also change up the colors. I just sort of went with a red, orange, yellow into like an ivory, which I like better than using a white back here because that's pretty stark. And then into the blues, but you can do um, anything you want. This is a smaller version of it where we added little flowers um, to the design, not just these spirals. You can also turn it vertically, paint it a little different. And this has got more of a blue greens. Uh, more of a natural landscape color. So really feel free to mix it up, do whatever you like, um, make it your own. So anyways, um, if you see in the description to give StreamYard your permission, please um, do that. That way I can see who you are in the chat. Um, and let me put the chat up so I can see. I'd like to see um, who's here and where you're from. So let me, um, let me take down that so you can really see. Let me bring up the comments and let me know if you're here uh, watching and where you're watching from and maybe what you love to paint. So maybe this will be a new favorite. I don't even sketch this on yet. What I do is I paint the whole background. I go from left to right. Actually, I'm going to go middle out because of the light in the middle. And then we're going to sketch on uh, our tree. You can sketch it on with chalk or a pencil. I sometimes jump right in and do it with Sharpie. We're going to outline it with Sharpie after we sketch it. So good morning. Good morning. Say hello. I want to make sure you guys can hear me okay. And all of the techie stuff is working. I'm happy to see I'm not upside down or sideways because that happens quite a bit. Um, so anyway, say hello. And this is my blank canvas. Like I said, I'm going to start right in the middle. It does not matter, you know, how your colors go on. Don't try to compare it to mine. This time when I paint it, it's going to be completely different. I, it, it, you can't get it the same. So don't worry that it doesn't look just like mine. On my original here, I went across with great expectations of doing all the colors and then did blue and ran out of room. So there's green in the corner. You could do green along the edge. You could do green in the corner. You could not do green at all if you want to. So it's up to you. Um, it, it's not going to be perfect, and it's hand-painted and hand-done. So that's why. Okay, I'm going to um, use some basic colors. I'm going to add white and black to my palette, but this is just my background colors. I've got an ivory. I've got a dark green. I've got a blue, kind of a primary, ultramarine, cobalt, whatever you might have and uh, primary yellow, orange, red. I happen to have a light orange I threw in there, but you can mix that very easily with just your orange and your white. And like I said, I'll add a few colors afterwards when we go for the detailing. But for now, that's all I need on my um, palette. And as you can see, you don't need a lot of uh, things to get started. I'm simply gonna use a canvas board this morning. I use just like a foam plate or a foam, uh, 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 plate, whatever these are, these little trays uh, for my paints, just some little cups for my water, a few brushes, whatever you have, just grab them. I, I know I go on about these, but I do like these stiffer bristle brushes for a lot of my work, a lot of my backgrounds, a lot of my landscapes. They're stiffer. They're more for like uh, oil or fine art painting, but um, I love the way they dig into the nooks and crannies of the canvas. It covers well. They come in different sizes. I like to use... Um, a filbert, which is kind of a rounded top. They're bright, so they're a long-handled brush. It's just the way these guys come, but I do really like these. I usually use, if you only wanted a couple, you could get maybe a smaller one and a larger one, um, just to try them out and see if you like them. If you have just a chip brush or something like that, or maybe a big, you know, one inch or three quarter inch synthetic, that works too. Okay, um, and we'll have some fine detail brushes later on, but let's just jump in and get started because this really is fun and you're going to be surprised at how easy it is. I'm just taking that, um, that this is probably like a 12 um, of the bristle brush, starting with my ivory. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break up this painting kind of in two halves just to make it easier to do and not have to keep rinsing my brush out. I'm going to start in the middle, so I'm going to kind of do a little bit of ivory here. And I want to work fairly quickly so that I can work wet and wet as I go to this background. You can see it's nicely blended. If you can work quickly with your colors going light into dark and just and just blending them as you go, you, you're going to get a beautiful blended background without even trying. And let me show you how to do that. 
I'm going to just take some of that ivory on my brush. I'm just eyeballing the center. I'm not going to worry if it's exact. I'm going to paint kind of a big egg shape. I know it's a little difficult to see ivory on the white, but when we start getting in the colors, you will. So I'm, it's kind of an egg shape to start, but I'm really working on the left-hand side of this egg. Um, a little bit of a curve. Keep a paper towel in your hand because when we switch to the next color, I don't rinse the brush off. I don't want it to get wet. I want a dry blend so that it blends nicely. So all I do is simply just wipe off my brush in my paper towel. I do a lot of dry brushing when I paint, so I always have some paper towels in my hand. Now I'm going to go into the yellow and I'm just putting a little yellow on my brush. And I'm not gonna go right on top of this ivory. I'm gonna go to the left of it a little bit. See, I'm just leaving a little bit of a, of a barrier there. Get a little bit of that yellow on. You can see the shape, it's kind of like a little C shape. Dry off your brush. I want to blend these two colors together but I want to do it with a br dry brush. And so now I've got my dry brush and now I'm just simply going into my ivory and my yellow and blending it. You have plenty of time to work here and get it the way you like. If as you go along, you find you're getting too much paint on your brush, simply wipe it off. Hey, good morning. Hi, Bonnie. Hey, Mary Beth. You're just up the street. How was the beach last night? And can you believe it's so chilly this morning? I am in Maine right now, and we have had the craziest weather in New England this summer so far. It was, what, 59 when I got up this morning? It feels like fall. It got very windy and cool last night. We have had record rainfall for July. We have beat and surpassed the record from 1938. It's crazy. We had 97 degrees in June for a few days and then 50 for the next. So I'm doing, now I just got my blend from my ivory into my yellow nice, wiping it off. I'm going to go into my lighter orange. Same thing. I'm going to go right up against that a little bit. I'm not going to go on top of it too much yet. Just a little of that orange. Dry off that orange. Keep your dry brush and just blend it. And so we're going to slowly work across. I'm going to do the same thing in the orange here. It's not much different, but it's a little darker. Like I said, you could just use the orange, mixing into the yellow would work or mixing it into a little white. But I just like, since I had that light orange, I use that color a lot. I, I do mix most of my colors from my primaries, but I do use that light orange quite a bit. And I've got some orange in, I'm gonna dry it off. I'm gonna go right into my red. And this is gonna end on this side. Now, sometimes the paints, some of the acrylics are a little translucent. And as you can see, you can see through it a little bit there. We can just go back and put a second coat on. Really don't need it too much where this painting is covered with a lot of elements in, in the tree and all the bits and pieces on the tree. But if you would like a brighter, more solid colored red, um, you can get that by just putting another second coat on. I'm gonna grab one of these paper towels. Okay, so it looks very stripy to me now, but that's okay. We've got our colors on, we've got them started to blend and I'm gonna just now dry off the brush and I'm gonna kind of finesse it a little bit. I'm actually gonna go into a drier brush for that. I think I'll do it with my, my chip brush because I want it to look just a little more blended. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just softly with the dry brush blending it on top. And now I'm going to go into the yellow and do the same thing. Just blending it. These little chip brushes are fabulous. You can get them like the two inch, a small, this is a one and a half inch at the dollar store, at the hardware store, craft store. And they're handy to have. I use them for my ceramic painting. I use them for my canvas painting. I use them for all sorts of things. Okay, so you got a little bit of a blend there. And we do have to clean our brush off now. I have a bunch, so I'm going to just grab a fresh one. But if you want to clean your brush off, dry it really well. And then you can go back into um, the ivory. I'm going to repeat the process for this side. So I'm gonna kind of finish my little right-hand side of the egg. Hi, Kit, good morning, nice to see you. And Kathy, Kathy, I'm painting the Tree of Life painting. Let me show you. This is one of my favorites and one of my painter's favorites paintings. And when we do it at class, people do, like I said, all colors. 
all different ways, all different kinds of trees. It's really a fun project that you can really express yourself with. Okay, I'm gonna try that off like we were doing. And this time I'm going to see the blues and the greens. And like I said, on mine, I didn't leave really much room. So I am going to uh, maybe make a little more room for green on that side. I'm gonna go right, I've dried the ivory off my brush best I can. I'm going into my blue. I'm gonna leave that little space there just to give me a little room to blend. I don't wanna drag that ivory into my panel quite yet. I like the way going back with that chip brush, the dry chip brush and blending work nicely. I might incorporate that next time when I paint something that needs to be blended like this. You could add some purple in if you wanted now. You could add whatever color you like. It's your painting. Okay. Again, we're gonna dry off the brush from the blue. And go into the green. I have a dark phthalo green. I use this green a lot. It, it blends and makes beautiful greens. Look at, I've just got blobs over here, but I'm not even gonna worry. My tree will cover it. Um, so uh, primary colors, you can mix quite a bit. And I do love that it's a very dark phthalo green. I know it looks a little black, but you mix that with yellow and you get beautiful greens. And I'll show you when we get to the tree. So that's what I'm gonna go into next is that dark green. And can you see it? You can see the color a little better there. It's kind of a blue green. And I really use that a lot. A lot of times if you get a, you, you want a nice green um, for your landscapes and your florals. And I find this one I can mix with yellow and get a bright green, mix it with like a yellow ochre and get more of an army green. It's pretty versatile. Um, but you can certainly mix your green, like black, blue and yellow, of course, gets green, but a black and yellow will give you a nice army green too. So I do try to stress um, using the primaries when I'm painting and just giving you some tips and pointers on how to mix your colors. All right, so we've got our two colors there. Oh, I skipped ahead. See, I'm not paying attention. I didn't even blend here yet. Let me do that. Paint is wet, so we have no worries. See what happens when I chat and I, and I see a squirrel and I go off to the shiny things? Okay, so now I'm gonna blend. And it's still wet enough to blend. I am just using my brush, my dry brush now, on top of both colors. I've got like half my brush in the ivory, half my brush in the blue. I'm gonna blend that down. I've collected a lot of paint on my brush, so I'm gonna wipe it off and use it to blend a little more. And just work at it and blend at it the best you can. If you've not done this technique before, it might take a little getting used to and a little practice. But this is a great painting for it because no matter what it looks like, when you put that tree full of leaves and full of little flowers and doodads on top, you don't even see the background so much, but it gave you a little uh, place to practice doing this sort of a blending technique. Okay, now I'm going to go back and blend these two, same way, dried the brush off. I'm going on top of the blue and the green. And I think I'll go back and finesse it a little with the chip brush. If it bothers me at the very end, I might worry about this, the transparency of some of the colors, but I put behind my tree uh, afterwards little spirals in, very lightly, very subtle. And why I do that is, first of all, I love the spiral element in lots of things, but it takes your eye away from any streaking that may be there, fills in some of the empty spaces. I really like the way it finishes off the painting. So I know this looks really odd, right? You can just uh, imagine, but once we get our tree on it, I'm going to use this brush just to sort of soften like I did. Always when you want to go on and uh, do this blending, make sure you have a clean, dry brush. I can dry that off and use that for here. And now I'm going to stand back and look and evaluate and see if I like it. In fact, I think I'll scoot off the little bits of blue paint I got over here. I want to just blend this a little more. And this is back with the brush I used over here. If I need to, I can go into a little more color. Just gonna cover up with that uh, little bit of specks of blue work. I'm not really super crazy about that shade. That was just a primary yellow. It looks a little, it's a cold yellow. I want something a little warmer. I'm just taking another yellow out. See how the difference, it's warmer, it's more gold. I just seem to, um, I just think that that might do a better job here. 
I want to soften that. Can you see the difference it's going to make a little bit? I just want to soften that a little bit. It might help if I get the blue out of my brush. And then we're going to let this dry. And we are going to put our tree sketch on. Light touches, dry brush. Play around with it to get it the way you want. I'm mixing that in a little. It was a little bit of a thin stripe, so because the ivory has sort of dried now, I'm taking tiny bits on my brush and just play with it. Just kind of go back and forth, see what you like. And again, don't be too worried because this is going to be completely covered. So I think that's a good place to stop. And we're going to let that dry a little bit. And then we're going to work on it's a little aversion, so you can just kind of see. So it's just in the back. This one is more up and down stripes, but I do, I do like to curve them a bit. And we've got to let this dry. What we're going to do when this is dry is just sketch on a tree. Um, you can use a pencil. You can use a little piece of chalk. I'm going to use a Sharpie. And if you're not very, very comfortable using, you know, the little liner brush to do all your little spirally branches and things, you can use a Sharpie or a paint marker. Um, Sharpie works for this. I do love the Posca paint markers or any kind of paint marker as well. They look like this and they actually have paint in them. So you shake it up and you get, when you write with this, it looks just like, um, just like paint really. For, for our purposes for this, the Sharpie works. Kit, what brand of green? Kit, I buy that in the big gallons from Dick Blick. Um, but if you were to go and look for Liquitex or one of the tube acrylics in the stores, you would find a phthalo green. But again, we can always mix some, but I, I use that for a lot. So if you do see that, sometimes I really do like the tubed acrylics, the Liquitex and the golden brand is great. Nice body to it, smooth, it's thicker, so it works well for landscapes and things. I love the craft paints. They work for everything. They're great for little detail bits, but when I'm doing big landscapes and things, it is nice to have some of those tube acrylics if you want to pick some up and give them a give them a try. Hello from Maryland. I see Facebook user. I'm not sure your name, but good morning. Thanks for joining. And let me see. I think I will just put my brushes in some water uh, while I am painting. Now, brush care. These big brushes are pretty durable. So if I'm going from one color to another, or I know I'm coming back in a little while, I'll set it aside. Any of your little synthetics, please rinse them off as you go. I know people put them aside and say, oh, I'm going back to that color at some point in my painting. And in the meantime, the paint has dried in the ferrule. You're going to get crazy hair. You're going to get not a nice um, tip. These are not expensive brushes, but you could use them for a long time as long as they keep their shape. So rinsing them off and drying them off um, will help with that. If you have some that are too far gone and you have crazy hairdos and the hairs are splaying, uh, there's a little trick. It might work. Is a boiling water, very hot water, dip it in, reshape it. After you're done painting, if you wash your brushes out with a brush soap or simply a bar of ivory soap back and forth, you'll be surprised at all of the paint that will come out of the ferrule there. Um, and then you can use the soap as sizing and just reshape them. Just a little tip. Um, sometimes do as I say, not as I do, because I am famous for throwing my brushes around. But these big guys, I am done with all of the big brushes. So I'm going to sit them in water for now, and then I'm going to give them a good wash when I'm done. These little guys, as I go along, I'm going to rinse as we go. And um, we're going to let that dry. The, the trick with the, using the paint pen or the Sharpies is the paint has to be really dry. If you even touch it, if it's just damp, you're going to, you're, Market will stop working immediately. You need to have it nice and dry for that. Good morning, Lorena from South Carolina. I bet your weather is better than ours up here in New England. Um, so little tips there. Um, so I, I'm into the virtual artist group. So why don't you guys let me know who's in the virtual artist group? Um, I'm also streaming this onto the Tinker's Cart page and my Cardist group. So I do have a private membership and Kit is in it and there may be a few others here. And that's been a lot of fun. I just did my calendar kit this morning for August. So I'm going to make sure the links work and I'm gonna send that to you guys this afternoon, you know, this afternoon or as soon as I'm done with class and get the links 
make sure they're, they're cl clickable. It's a fun group. It's a small um, group. We paint in the group. I paint live by Zoom with you guys a couple times a month. I record uh, videos just for the group um, patterns and paintings that are just for you guys. I do my paid group, paid my paid classes on the Tinker's Cart art page. Um, usually about ten dollars. Sometimes you know, depending on the price, those all go into the Cardist group for free. So you get all of that content as well as a nice library of paintings and tracers that. If that's not enough for you to paint, there's more, but uh, I, I try not to overwhelm. Everything stays on the page. It's all recorded and you can watch it as you would as you would like. And um, that membership is closed at the moment, but it will open again in the fall. So if anyone's interested, just uh, drop a little uh, that you're interested in the um, in the comments or send me a message and I will uh, and I'll post the, the link actually in the description when I'm done. So you can look for that in a few places. And it is a lot of fun and it's it's it's, it's very inexpensive. It's the less than the price of one paint night that I when I do my in person paint nights. So anyways, I'd love to paint with you guys. And um, let's see, I'm going to make sure I can see your comments. So I am watching and I can answer questions. Um, I just don't want to start my tree just for a couple minutes because it is wet and I don't have my hair dryer. Hair dryer or heat gun is fabulous for drying your paints as you go if you're impatient like me and you want to just keep at it. So, um, yeah, that's pretty easy. Let me pull on the other paintings and I'll give you an idea of what we're doing coming up and then we'll sketch. And like I said, this is you can do a multi, multitudes of multiple ways. So once we are done with this drying, we're going to sketch our tree on. Now notice. I say put your tree in the middle. Mine is way off to the left. So don't fuss or worry too much about little bits of things. Just have fun. When you're done, if you had fun and there was joy in your painting, it will show. Doesn't this look fun and whimsical? If you struggle and measure and try to get it all perfect, it's going to look overworked, that you struggled and too detailed. This is fun. We want you to play with the brushes and have fun. So we're going to put our tree in make all these spirally branches, which you can make as few or many as you like. This one, I went a little crazy with the marker and did lots of branches. This one has a little less. And all I do on this one after is we're gonna take balls of color and just spiral them on. Uh, they almost look like little roses. They could be just a little decorative element. And simply just spiraling the paint. I'm not keeping it in a tight circle. I'm just going like this and letting it go. And then I go over it with a little white to give it that little spiral look. We can throw in some leaves. At the end, if you like this look, what I did, it's very subtle, but can you see a little bit of these little spirals around? I just love that spiral shape. So I threw them in here and there. And that could be it. You could, you could be done if you like that look. This one I added some little flaw, uh, flowers to. They're just one stroke flowers, and I'll show you how to make them. You can outline them with a Sharpie. Some I outlined it with white paint. It's the same little spirals, but I threw these little one stroke flowers in just to see what it looked like and a few little leaves. Um, and then there's that one that we did the vertical, which simply gives you a good idea of what it looks like with just these big round spiral bits. I gave this one a little root that curls, which you can. And notice one little element when I paint my tree, I, I do it black. And I'm not a big gray person. I love color, as you probably can see. So I am highlighting my paint and shading my paint with blue. You could do that with purple. I just don't want it to be black with white, and then it just turns gray. Okay. Hey, Cheryl. You, you know how chilly it is today, then, because you're right nearby. Um, okay. This looks like it's good enough. So like I said, if you're more comfortable, please just do it with a pencil or a piece of chalk. I'm going to jump right in with my Sharpie, and I'm just going to do my trunk. I'm just going to do a shape like this. That is my trunk. It just gets a little wider at the top and at the bottom. If you like that little spiral, that little root, you can add that. This is how I start. I've gone up just a little further than halfway. Not, not you know, I, I'm not really paying too much attention to that sort of thing, but just to give you a point to go. There's a little curved line this way, a little curved line that way. You've got a trunk. This is the fun part. Just take and squiggle lines out. All I'm doing is adding, I've got a kind of an old Sharpie here, but I'm just going to make branches any old way. They're just spiraled. And you know what, because it's so light, I'm going to get a, a newer Sharpie because that one you can't see. So I have just made 
We're going to paint over this, so don't worry what they look like. You just want to get them on there. And again, you could be doing this with a pencil. So do it with a pencil first if you'd like, and then you can go over it with your Sharpie. Once I get like the main uh, branches in, what I'm basically doing is trying to just fill up most of that canvas. And then I just add spirals. You know what? My paint is a little wet, so I'm kind of doing what I told you not to. So I'm just going to use black paint to show you. And let me just get, sorry, the reach there. Get a little black paint on here. And I am going to just paint it on. I would usually do it in Sharpie, but this way you can see me on camera. I'm just going to go off each of these branches now and just make these little curly cues. They could go any way you want. They could go like off to, I'm going to just put this in because I don't think you can see that with the, okay. so I've got this curly cue here. So maybe I'll do one like that. And then I could do one like this. I'm going to go out and just try to fill up that entire canvas with these little curlies. They could be little, they could be big and there's no right or wrong. So just, Fill up all the space with these little curly cues. I'm adding a little bit of water each time, most strokes to my brush because the paint, it tends to be a little thick. And when I'm doing detail work like this, I want to thin it down. I want it to be more like ink consistency, not really like draggy, heavy paint. And I'm simply looking for an empty space and sticking a curly cue in there. And like I said, every time you've made one, you can make one off it, and you can make one off it, as many and as few as you like. I go to the right sometimes, I go to the left. Lots of times it forms like a little heart shape up here, which is kind of cool. But with your Sharpie, when your paint is good and dry, so if you want to hit it with the hairdryer or just simply wait, this is all recorded. You can watch this later. You don't have to try to keep up. You can always come back and stop and start it. Lots of times in my classes, people paint along, but many people just watch, which is kind of a good way to soak it all in, take some notes, and then go back with the video and paint any time you want at your own pace. Or you can get some friends together and do it, which would be fun. So I am just putting all these little guys on. And like I said, you don't have to do as many. It could be a little more simple if that's your taste. And you can add more too if you need them later. Looks to me like I've got plenty, but right here there's not that many. So I might add a few here. And just to break this up because it's, <laughs> I didn't realize it, but there's like a mirror image there. So I'm gonna make that a little different. And sometimes I can't stop. It's like, okay, step away, just stop. Sometimes you need to, to, to do that. So basically that is how I start. Background, ivory in the middle because the white, like I said, looks harsh. Whatever colors you like to blend into. Get your tree drawn on very whimsically, very, very quickly, just all little spirals. And then we will paint it in with the paint, um, the black paint. You can use whatever brush you want to fill that in. I'm going to get a little bigger brush because that tiny one, it would take me forever to be doing that. So I'm just going to go and use a flat, just a little synthetic flat brush. And I'm just painting it in now just to base coat it. And when it's dry, I'll add some of those little highlights in, of blue. And you, um, is anyone painting along this morning? Are you watching? Or I would love to um, see what you're all up to this morning. You just put any questions or any comments in there and I will keep an eye on that as I go along. The tricky part is when you've got this thick trunk here and now you've got all these branches meeting it and doesn't it look kind of weird like it's got sprouting this hair off the top of its head. We want to make some of these branches that are coming in there a little heavier now. So I'm just making them a little heavier so that they can meet and not look so awkward. Okay. 
again, we're going to go over these with some lights and we're going to add all those little spirally bits. So I don't worry about if the paint is a little thin somewhere or it's a little heavy. It's a part I don't like. I'll just strategically put a little element on top of it. And I'm just going to turn this upside down. Sometimes it's easier to turn that painting any which way. You might be more comfortable painting flat. I'm painting flat so you can see me on camera. Sometimes I'll paint at an easel, depending on the size of the painting or if I'm indoors or outdoors or whatnot. But there's no right or wrong. Paint however you are comfortable. So I'm just going over some of these little branches I did that were a little light or with the Sharpie that didn't really show up. Starting to think about fall paintings. I don't want to think about fall yet. We haven't enjoyed summer, but I am getting some ideas for some fun fall paintings. And so if you have any ideas of what you might like to see, actually throw them out there. Fall and Christmas and winter. It's nice to get those started early. I can get samples painted and whatnot. And this little one here is kind of sparse. So I'm going to just fix this one here. Okay, it looks a little like a Jack Skellington tree or a Halloween tree. I'll put that up so you can see it's not by any means perfect. I just got my little skeleton of my tree in there. All right, when that dries, I will go ahead and start putting in the highlights. I'm going to get my colors ready for those little spiral bits. That can be any color on your palette, any color you want to grab, any color at all, purples, oranges, whatnot. I'm going to mix up a purple with my red and um, blue here, so I just have a little bit of a variety of colors, so I'm going to get those ready. A thing to note about the lighter colors like yellow, if I want to do a yellow spiral on here, it's not going to show that much. So I'm going to use the golden color, and I'm going to add a little white. Sometimes if you uh, have a color that's very transparent, you add a little bit of white. It will make it a little more opaque. Or you can simply do a white spiral, let it dry, and then we'll go back on with the, the lighter paint. So that works as well. Alrighty, Let's see. I'm going to mix myself up a little bit of a purple because I do want some purple spirals. So it's just really a little of my red and blue. I'm going to get a purple there. So I'll mix up a little pile of that for the spirals. I want them a little dark so that when I go over them with a little white touch um, on the top, it shows up. I'm going to make a little bit of a lighter green for my leaves, which wait till you see this. When you do use your primary uh, cadmium yellow, even that's more like a cad light, uh, mix it with that green. Look at the pretty greens you're going to get. You can get all shades of green. So I'm going to make up a little bit of a lighter green there. And again, if you had this already mixed up in a bottle, feel free to use them. I just always like to let you know what you can make. I'm going to use red because it'll turn pink when I put the little white bits on it. I think I'll stick with those colors. I might grab a teal. I, I, cut, I, I bought a really pretty teal yesterday, so let's try that too. Let's add a little something something. Okay, so I'm going to start with those little spirals now while that dries. You just need a round brush, just a little round brush of any sort. And for instance, let's start with the purple because that's a nice dart. So I'm going to take my brush, load it with paint, and I'm going to come closer up to the camera so you can really see what I'm doing. I am just plunking my brush down, spiraling it out, and that's it. It doesn't have to be covered um, perfectly. I just put it down, spiral, and I don't mind if this bases of the background showing through. And I'm going to just hop around and do them. If they don't show up on some of the colors, that's fine. Do it anyway. When you put your white on top, it's going to pop. So I don't want to do too, too many at a time because I want it to stay a little damp when I go back with my white. I'm not putting them in any particular order. They're not all hanging off a branch. They're not all on a branch. I'm just putting them wherever I want. Sometimes they could be look like they're hanging off a branch. Sometimes they could be right on top of a branch. Or if you have a little boo-boo and you want to cover it, you're good to go. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a few of them. But I want to go back in now with some white so that it blends when I do the spiral on top. So I am just going to rinse off my brush quick, pat it on the paper towel so it's a little drier, take my white, 
And I'm going to do more purple all over, but I don't want to go back when they're dry. So I'm taking a little white on my brush, and I'll show you why. You can go right on top of the little ball that you did, bunk your paintbrush down, spiral out, go right over the edge. But see how now you get a lighter shade? It's like a light purple, and it mixes. It's not just a white line on top of the little ball. And see how I'm going right out over the edge. I do this little technique when I'm making a moon or a sun or lots of little round objects. I just plunk the brush in the middle, spiral, spiral, spiral. I want to try to get a better angle for you. I'm loading a little bit of white on my brush each time so I don't, don't drag all that purple. And I'm watching the camera, so I'm hoping that you can kind of see better. I'm just plunking the brush in the middle of that spiral and just spiraling it out. Very loose like that. Okay, so I'll just finish up these few I made, and then I'll go back and do some purple ones. You know what you might want to do is just, if you have two little round brushes, you could use one for your element, your circle, and then you could use one for the lines, because we're going to be, you know, painting them right along. And when you're doing it, you might see closer why. If I was to do that purple, let it dry perfectly, go back with the white, it would just be so much of a bright white line, and you'd have to get it just so... This way it blends, and I like that blend that you get. So I'm taking more of that dark purple, and I'm going to do more of those. I'm just plunking it down in spiral, plunking it down in spiral. And I'm just kind of eyeballing them, and I'm kind of just giving them enough time to get just a little tacky before I go back with the white. That's something you'll figure out as you're painting. You'll just see how fast your paint's drying where you are. and It's not the end of the world if you do it over one that's still um, has dried already. And so I've just put a bunch on. I'm going to go to my white and just go over them. So you can see this little one here is... Um, you hardly can see it because it's that purple and red, but once you put the white on, see how it pops? This is a fun little element to use in your background or any place you need a little, just a little decorative touch. It's kind of a fun little, looks like a little beach rose, looks like a little rose. It's not too far off from my one stroke uh, roses, which I don't know if you saw it, but it's on the Tinker's Card art page. Um, I might have done it into the virtual art retreat too. And it was just a little one stroke flowers that you can practice actually and uh, implement in some of your paintings. For the Curtis group, we're doing that teacup floral pretty soon. And that will use little flowers like this very easily in it. And just add a little water if you need to as you go. If you gather too much purple on your brush, just give it a little wipe on your paper towel. And there we are. So now I'll just switch off and just use all the colors that I have, whatever you feel like. Like I said, I'm going to just say I'm going to do some orange, some of this light orange. When you're painting over the light orange bits, you're really not going to see it that much. But that's okay because when you go over with the white, they'll pop out. So any shades that you have on your palette or that you want to mix. I'm doing some, even though they're very subtle on this orange and red background, you'll see them once. Maybe I'll just do one side and then do the other so that the color doesn't dry. That might be a good way to do it. See how quickly they can go along too. I'm being careful because some of my black is still wet, so I don't want to go in there and drag that wet black into my color, into my nice orange. And let's do one here. And I think I will go back now and just dry off that brush and get some white. Get both my brushes clean there so they're ready to go. And just the white again, right in the middle, spiral. And now it shows up a little more than it did a little while ago when it was just the orange. 
Some you can keep smaller, some can be bigger. Try not to keep them tight little balls. When you do the spiral, don't worry about saying, oh, I gotta keep it right within where the orange or the color is. Go right out and over the edge and give it that nice little um, ending where it's a little space and it's a little, what do I wanna say? Like, oh, look, I dragged a little black in there, but no worries. It's just as a little uneven edge. It's not a perfect edge. And I am picking up black, is that pink? I'm on my porch, so it is taking a little while to dry. It's kind of cool this morning. And I usually do grab my hair dryer, but I did not this morning. I'm going to leave that one wet because it has some black under it. Okay, I'm going to go and do some orange on the other side now. Maybe I'll put this right side up now. And again, it's just plunking it down, spiraling it out. I know the blue shows through, but again, when we put the white on, it's going to have be a little more opaque. And I'm randomly just plopping them down wherever I my brush lands. I think I will do a white underpainting for the yellow one, so you can see how something like that works. Uh, maybe one more here. I'll go into my white. And just again, the repeat, press, pull, spiral it out. Everybody have fun in the virtual art retreat this month. It's been so cool, right? All the great projects and Brenda with her oil painting. If you ever want to try oil painting, oil painting is my first love. And I, um, I started oil painting when I was about 10. I love it. So it's nice to get a little peek into inside, inside that world. And, and Amy's great tips and, and tricks of um, the art business is great if you think you might want to sell some of your pieces or you know is it linda who accidentally sold some pieces you kind of get some ideas of how that to do that and do shows and and great with online sales she's amazing and lisa marie and her painting too and uh, oh it's a great group of ladies in that group we're having we're having fun and um i know we all are sad to see july come to an end but fear not we are going to do a fall um retreat as well so we will come on actually we're going to be on on the fourth look for the announcement join in we're going to all be together answering some questions if you have them telling you what's coming up and uh just doing a little recap of the month so oh lisa yep yeah, go on to work i'm sorry you have to get into work today on saturday but it's here later so no worries Okay, so I've got my little orange ones mostly done. Okay, I'm just trying to keep an eye on you guys too if you have anything posted in there. Okay, so let me show you why we need to base coat sometimes like for yellow. So say I'm doing a night sky or even a blue sky or I wanna put a sun. If you go and put your yellow on top of any kind of a blue, it's gonna either look green or be very translucent. So I go and I base coat it in white first. So if I wanted to go with my yellow on top of here, say, right, let me come up closer again and did my little spiral. You can't even see it. It looks like a little sort of green blob. So what I do is I paint them in white first. So I'm just going to go right over that one and paint it. Even if it's a little bit of a light yellow, because there's yellow on my brush, it doesn't mean matter. We just need it base coated. You can already see that's much brighter. Wherever I want a yellow one, I'm going to go in now, especially on this dark side, and do white. And also, if you want some that are overlapping the tree, that will make it so you can really see it. So even on the yellow section, like I said, it's not going to show up a lot, but it will once we've highlighted it. And I'm even doing it even though it's on that little light color. It'll really pop later on these dark colors, though. But it's good because it makes some a little subtle. Some really stand out and pop. Uh, it's a nice variety. So now I can just go and do whatever I think I want a yellow one. 
I'm doing those spirals. It's nice to see some new faces here. I'm glad you all kind of got up to join me. So you can see now I'm doing some that are right, since my black is drying, and some of them are going right over there. I was thinking about painting these on the tiny miniature canvases I have. I love painting on those little tiny miniature canvases. Okay, so I'm gonna let them dry a tiny bit because I don't wanna put the yellow on top till it's dry. I'm going to find an, oh, let's try that teal color for the for, just for the heck of it. It's not a color I've used on before, but I'm gonna go and put my little balls in. Oh, teal, I'll do this side first. It's pretty relaxing. Once you get the hang of these little guys, it's sort of therapeutic, it's sort of relaxing. And Michelle's, Michelle is um, on the art retreat with us too. And she has the coolest, most fun little paintings. And the best thing was, um, Michelle's from Orlando. I'm from Massachusetts. And we met in person last month, this month, the beginning of July. And we were like sisters from another mother. We have so many similar um, things that we love. So that was kind of cool. And uh I'm in Orlando a lot. My family's in Orlando, so I get back and forth there quite a bit. So I look forward to catching up with you. And we 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 virtual art retreat girls, we have to someday maybe um do some sort of in-person event to all to get together. Wouldn't that be the best thing? So now I've taken my little bit of white on my liner brush still. Same thing, just making those little spirals on top. They really look cool. They're popping nicely on this teal color. I'm in a teal pink phase. I'm not a pastel girl by any means. But I don't know, I've been in this pink and teal phase this summer. So I'm gonna do all these little spirals, do my turquoise on the uh, teal turquoise on the other side and then go back to my yellow bits. I love it when you put the brush in the middle spiral and it drags both colors out and gives you that little haze or that little, um, what do you, little, little way that little spiral comes out and just gets loose on the end. I just like that look. Okay, and I always miss some and have to go back, but I think I've got them all there pretty much. Let's do them on this side. I'm dying to see your paintings when you're done. I know a lot of people aren't painting today, but when you are done, please come in and add them to this post or onto one of my pages. I have the Tinker's Cart art page where I do all sorts of little things. You can see that's my business page. I also have a private group, which is Learn to Paint with Cheryl. And I do little tutorials and things there. I have a YouTube channel, which is Cheryl uh, Tinker's Cart Art. And I also have a texting um, program so that if you want to be notified when I go live to paint, it's a brand new program, so I'm getting the hang of it, guys. I, I will um, get it all squared away so that every time I go live, I let you know i have been neglecting to do that these last few times i'm so worried getting set up with all the tech stuff and i get the phone hooked up and i haven't texted so i apologize but i will get better at that but if you would like to be on my texting loop and i'll just give you a quick text text saying i'm going live you can and and the number is there nine seven eight three one five five six five oh if you want to get on that list it's not like i'm going to spam you or sell your number or give you ads and things it's mostly just when i go in live because i'm a little with the ios and all the updates and facebook lately things have been wonky and people have missed my um classes and whatnot so i thought why not have you notified through facebook through email which i do um but the texting one is immediate. And I know I, if, I, if I got notified 15 minutes before I'd forget, I, I would be like shiny thing and I'd be gone. But this way, right before I go, right as I'm going live, you get a little blurb. And uh, so if that's something you like, please just send me a text at that number and, and you'll be on the list. You can also text me at that number anytime. If you have a question or an issue, you want to send a picture or painting you're having issues with, I'm there to answer them as well as a private message. Feel free at any time to send me a private message with an image. If you need a critique or some help, I'm there. It's what I do. I love to get people painting and 
Even if you think you can't paint, I try to break it down really, really super simple, little baby steps and get you through the painting. I think it's fabulous when um, someone who's had an interest in art, but always thought, oh, I'm not an artist. I can't draw a straight line. Um, little tip, we don't need straight lines. There are rulers for that. But it's sad when they've gone for a long while loving art and, and not jumping in because they thought they didn't have the talent or someone told them they didn't have the talent or the art teacher didn't think they could paint. It doesn't matter. If you can do something that relaxes you, passes the time, you have fun, you have some self-esteem, um, just to get your mind off today's world, I'm all for it. Take a look in some of the museums and let me know that, that the art looks like somebody could draw. So please, anything goes. Just do your thing and have fun with it. And, and I'm here to answer questions on how to get started with that and whatnot. So anyway, yellow. Let's go back to the yellow ones. I'm a little bit more fond of that goldy yellow than that, that cold yellow. So I've mixed a little together. I'm going to do the same kind of stroke right over my white blobs. And they can really see that they're yellow now oh sorry lost my camera sometimes when a text comes through or something it lets it go but i'll put you back on so i don't think you missed very much hang on one moment though i think i you know what i neglected to put this on do not disturb my fault guys we'll bring you back into the studio there we go oops Okay, and I'll know you'll be upside down when I start, but I will fix you. Sorry about that. If that happens and I don't notice, then we put it in the comments, although when I look up, I should see it. Um, and let me get these little things off here. And we get our comments. Sometimes we can put those up, which is kind of cool. Getting the hang of all the techie things. Oops, let's see. Ah, there we are. Sorry about that, guys. All righty then. Oh, good. I'm glad you love it. And um, yep, that's what's good about it. Watch it and you can always fix it later. It looks like I'm a little reversed there, guys, but you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. It's just, oh, no, it's not. My paint palette is on the wrong side. I usually have it over here. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, yellow. We're putting our yellow in and you can actually see me. And uh, I'll keep an eye so in case something comes through again, I will make sure that we're in the studio with both cameras. This techie stuff has been quite a learning process. I'm usually an in-person paint party doer, which I've been doing for many years. But then, like everything in pandemic, we pivoted and switched things up and started painting online, which I actually love. It's just getting all the pieces together, the cameras and the microphones and the tech and the not being upside down or sideways or silent or flipped or... <laughs> Okay, so I've done half, and I'm going to just do that same little trick with the white um, bits on top. And I'm just going to do the same thing. Spiral on top there. If I do some of these on the miniature canvases, I'll post them so you can see. I brought some of those up with me. Might be kind of fun. If you haven't seen them, they're back on the page. They're little miniature. I think they're three inch by three inch canvases. I get them in packs at Michael's and they, you can buy little tiny easels for them to go on. And they're a blast. You can line like four of them up at a time and paint them. And I did them with little ocean scenes and beach scenes of course, summer, right? I did some night scenes. They come in black as well. So to do little night scenes, it's pretty cool. And we will keep flipping and get the yellow on this side. So yeah, but if you want a little quick project or something to do with the kids or with the girls, you know, you're getting together for a girls' night and want to do a little something, but not like a big involved craft, perfect. One can paint a little easel, any subject. So fun. Okay, you guys have this down by heart by now. Color, spirals. And you could go as many or as few as you want. Um, did I do any? I, I usually save the green for the leaves, so you don't have to do a little green spiral. Uh, what else do I have on there that I might want to use? I'm skipping the blue because I have the teal. I might stick with just that. You could go for as many more as you want or not at all, and you know, fewer or more. 
let's give our little tree our highlights and then we'll do some leaves and fill in a little bit. And if you'd like, I'll show you those little one stroke flowers if you wanna add those as well. Okay, so for my shading, I'm gonna just use my flat brush kind of on my chisel edge. I love the flat brushes that are in a nice, hold a nice shape because I can get a wide, wide line or I can get it on the chisel edge and get a really thin line. Oh, wait a minute, you guys. Hey, I don't want the big, my big face there. You guys need to see the painting. What am I thinking? Sorry about that. There, 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 there. Let's get this a little better for you. Sorry about that. And now I'm on a different format too because of when I signed up. You know, I, don't, I want you to see the whole thing. So just give me one more second to get you back horizontally because I don't like the way that looks. I want you to see, see a, a little better view. Um, so let me change that up. Sorry, you've never got a big, big, big uh, me in your, in your face there. Hang on. So it's just what I'm talking about the techie stuff, right? I just want um, to have this have this look good for you. Um, try this again. So many little procedures to do for both devices here. This should work now. Okay. And I have to be horizontal when we come in. So this will be better when I switch you around. You guys are so patient. Thank you. And get rid of the big me. You don't need a big me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Better, right? All right. Sorry about that. You guys are so good. Um, okay. We're going to do the shading. Looks like a big black hole right now. It's much too dark. So I'm going to simply take some of my blue. Mix a little white with it. I want it to be a little lighter little blue and white, so I've got a light blue there. I don't want to go with my paintbrush full of paint on here. It's going to be a big blue line. Dry, dry off your brush and the paper towel a little bit. I'd rather have it light, build it up, than have it too dark and try to wipe it off. And what I simply do is I'm going to show you on the sample real quick on the painting. If I can get it in there. See, it's just some light blue lines. Chisel, chisel edge of my brush, and I'm just kind of going down the tree and just making some of these light blue lines. I'm going very light, like I told you. Almost too light. You can see, you can hardly see it. I want to go a little darker, but it's easier now to put another coat and build it up than to get a big blob of light blue on there. So I'm just going back with some more paint, drying it off a little bit still, and just kind of making some of them a little brighter. I'm just making kind of a wiggly line. I sort of chisel edge with my brush, Pulling it down, sometimes I press a little more and sometimes I go thinner. I just want random lines like that up and down my tree. And it gives the appearance of bark. I've got that big blob there. And I'm just going to push some of it out because the paint's wet. So it's easy enough to fix on your acrylic paint if you have a mistake. If it's wet, you could take a brush with some clean water and just wipe it off. Or you could simply paint over it. It's great. Um, painting with the acrylics because there's so many ways to alter and, and fix things as you go along. So I'm just going to go ahead with that light blue the same way, always taking a little off, and I'm going to do some on my branches just so it softens them. They look like they're just big black lines jumping out at you, but a little of this here and there, and it's going to soften it up and make it a little more pleasing to the eye. It doesn't have to be in all your little bits. I'm only going on the bigger branches. I'm loading very little, so I'm not worrying about wiping too much off. If I know there's nothing on the brush, really, I'm not going to worry. And can you see how that is already softening it a little bit? It's just softening it some. Put that wherever you need to. If it's starting to look more just white, add a little more blue, because I do want some to be more blue. And I love the way that looks on the black for a highlight more than gray. If I was doing a realistic tree, I would really not start with black. If you take a look very closely at trees in nature, they're not what you think. It's not a, like a whole black trunk, and you can see all colors in the trunk. I, purples and reflections of the leaves or reflections of the sky. So stop trying to think about what the object is 
and what it should be because oh trees are green and they have black brown stamp brown stamp stems trunks and just forget all that try to wipe it out of your mind and look at what you see and you'd be so surprised at the colors in anything clouds waves water okay I don't know if that's coming through on the camera as well. It looks pretty good in, in person. I'm a little not happy with this little spot here where there's a yellow little flower on there and it just seems like it's too thick. So what I'm gonna do is just a camouflage that. I'm just gonna put a couple of spirals right in there just to break it up a little bit. And I'll put some leaves in there later too. I just want to camouflage that a bit. If you want to get more white on your brush now, I'm not cleaning it. I'm just wiping it off and just take white this time, very light. It's going to still have blue, which I want. I don't want stark white, but you can also give it like a little lighter highlight on one side, let's say on the left if you wanted. Just, just gives it a little something, something. And those brush strokes, maybe I can show you on... I'm going to show you on the back with a darker color just because the brush stroke is kind of cool. And play around with your brushes, flat and round, to get different, uh, to be able to control the brush a little bit. So say I am doing, I'm going to use black just to show you. This is the kind of stroke I'm using on the trunk. Got my flat brush, which look at, you can make a nice flat line and you can get a teeny a thin line, which is fabulous, but you can get both in one stroke. Sometimes I would take a chisel edge, press a little bit. It's getting thicker. Press, bring it back to chisel. Look at how thin you can get it. And thin lines, a little trick. People say, oh, I can't paint a thin line. Oh, I can't get a point like that. It's not just your ability to paint. It's the brush and how you hold it. If you have a nice chisel edge or a nice tip on a round brush, I'm very loose with my brush. I'm not tight and struggling. It's very loose and I'm putting it down. And when I get to the end, I want to do a vein or something. I just lift it. I'm lifting it off the surface and look at without trying you're getting a thin line you can start if you're doing grasses you can and i'm painting it upside down sorry you guys you can start with a little pressure and then just lift 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 pull that paint brush right off and you're getting a thin line without trying because you're not taking your brush and you got a heavy hand and you're making your grass and you stop and oh, i can't paint a thin line it's just lifting that brush off of the surface Try that with a thin down paint. You don't. You want it more like ink, but just play around with a piece of mixed media or Bristol or just pay, no, sketchbook paper and just try different, get in different brush strokes. Look at this is a stroke that you can use to make leaves. You can take your flat brush, press, twist it, and look at you've got a leaf. Press, twist, you've got a leaf. Or press, twist, and you've got petals. And look for my one stroke flower painting uh, little tutorial because it gives you some practice strokes like this. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you the stroke I'm using for that dry brushing on the trunk is really just, I'm kind of pressing a little bit, I'm lifting up, I'm pressing a little bit, and I'm just getting the, the, the look of the, the bark like that. Probably a lot more than you needed to know, but I wanted to show you because I have my brush in my hand. Oh, hey, Marianne from South Carolina. Hi, Eric. Good morning. Have you painted? You're going to sit down and paint with me one day, right? Okay. The little um, leaves I put in now. I'm using a flat brush just like I did, but I'm going to a smaller one. I tend to go to the size of the leaf I want to make to the size of my brush. And I've got these little flat brushes, which came in a little set from Hobby Lobby, which are pretty cool. I'm not crazy that the handles are so tiny, but they're cute. But they're nice, and they've got little tiny flats and little tiny um, rounds in that kit. So I've got that little tiny flat. I'm going to use that light green I mixed up. Now, if it doesn't show up, I'm just going to, I would add just a tiny bit of white to it. A tiny bit of white, because that green mixed with yellow is a little see-through. So I'm taking, use a green that you have in your in your kit as well. You know, I've got all sorts of greens here too. Um, there's one in particular that's all mixed up, a light green that I like. But again, you can make them up on your palette. And some can be dark and some can be light. So I'm going to make those little strokes I just sort of showed you for leaves. It's just press and pull. Press and pull, press and pull. So I'm pressing and kind of twisting the brush and pulling it away. I'm gonna do a bunch of these little lime green ones and I'm gonna do some dark green ones. They're just little fillers. So look for spaces where places where there are spaces and throw them in. You could put one, you could put a couple, you could put a little clump of them. 
They're not going to show up as well on some of the colors, but again, that lends itself to the to the painting being interesting. It's going to have some light, some dark, some you can see, some you can't. And you can make as few or as many as you like. If there's a little place you're not crazy about, put a bunch of leaves there. You can make them bigger than I'm doing. Whatever size brush you have will kind of determine. I like these little dainty ones because I want the focal point to be on those flowers. I've got a little smudge up here, so I'm going to cover it with a couple of leaves. And again, that was just yellow and green mixed, and I'm adding a little white. <clears throat> But you can use any colors you have in bottles and jars, too. I'd like to always show you a bit about um, mixing. And, and when I have my color palette posted for a class, I tend to go a little bit less for paint so that you don't have to go and buy a bunch of colors because we can mix all of them from our primaries. But you are welcome to come along with any color you have. Um, I know it's tempting. I do the same thing. I go into the store and I like the teal yesterday. I could mix this teal up with the blue and the in that dark yellow green and some white, but I get mesmerized by all the colors, just like everybody, and I could probably open a paint store. Sometimes I'm gonna go into this dark green by itself. You get some nice dark leaves. Can you see how quick I'm doing those? And don't worry about, no one's gonna to come to your painting and say, oh, that leaf doesn't look like a leaf shape. No one's looking at that close. Even if it's a little blob, it's gonna be red as a leaf. So do the best you can, practice the little strokes, but. Just even if you just blob on some little green bits, you are good. I think this is a fun painting. It's a good painting for beginners too, I think. And it can be done so many different ways. I've got to go back and touch up that little orange guy. He was on the black and not dried when I was painting him. So I will go back. And again, you could go crazy and do like so many of these. I'm going to do some. And then I'm going to show you that other little flower. You could leave it as is with this, uh, these flowers, or you could add the little one stroke, little like daisy flowers. But since I've got you here this morning, I do want to show you those. And I think that might be enough. But again, you look at your own. If there's something you don't like in your painting, something's bothering you, it's a little wonky somehow, although it's hard for it to be wonky with this painting because this is very wonky painting. Um, let it sit. Look at it tomorrow. Put it up in the mirror. Sometimes holding it in the mirror or taking a photograph makes the little thing that is an issue pop out to you. So do, you know, do try those little techniques too. But sometimes it's a matter of just sitting it aside, looking at it another day, and you've got new eyes on it. I'm going to touch up that one little one with the orange over here. Um, I do take, I've got my white and i got a line of brush here because I touched up that little spiral. But while I have it, I'm going to put a few little lines in my trunk too. I've watered this white paint down quite a bit. It's very watery. And I'm just going to add some line work. And I'm going to put that up close in a minute to show you what I've done. It's just a little wiggly line. It's similar to the stroke I was using with the chisel. I do a little pressure and then I lighten up even though it's a round brush. And if it's a wider bit of a branch, I do it there. If I want to just tone down something that's so harsh, especially like some of this black on top of the yellow, right? I just go over it a little bit with the light. I am not being super careful. It doesn't have to land right on the branch or right on a certain side. I am just putting it on, letting it fall off if it has to. It's just toning the whole thing down. Can you see it? It's toning it down now a little bit. Not so harsh. Like little highlights of white. I think it just gives it a little more of a softness. And now I'll hold it up a little bit so you can see. It just is a little soft. You see some of those lines, how I put them right on top? And like what I've said about looking in the mirror of the camera, like in the camera here, I see it very dark right here, which I don't in person, but I do see it there. So I'm going to kind of lighten that up a little bit. All right. Now, 
the little one stroke flowers and then I'm going to show you the spirals in the back which are very much like we just did the small spirals only a little bigger but those little one stroke flowers if you're interested I'll put a few on and you can see what they look like I'm using a tiny tiny flat brush but if you have just a little round that's fine too so you can um, use that Debbie thanks for joining yeah when it's done um, it will be uploaded on the uh, virtual art retreat page and the other pages I'm streaming through. If you can't find it, send me a message and I will make sure you have it. The page is going to be archived, but you can still um, access uh, some of the things. So, and you can always find each of us on our own pages. So we are, we'll be around and watch for us on, on the 4th of August for the announcement about the fall retreat. Okay. So if I want to do some white ones, say I'm taking some white paint with that little tiny square brush. I'm going to do it on a dark area so you can see it better. And they're just, I go from the outside and press in. So little, just little petals in a little circle. Do the center white because the yellow again won't show and I'm gonna do yellow centers. So just outside in, the, the stroke is a little pressure and then lifting so it looks a little thinner. These are teeny, it doesn't matter so much. If we were doing a huge painting, you'd wanna really use the right uh, strokes but this is just these little flowers which you could do whole little flowers or simply three little petals peeking out from behind one. It adds a little fun to it. I think I'm going to add them to mine. I'm going to add them here and there. I'm just going to use white. You could use any color you want, but remember if you want yellow, you'll do the white first, yellow on top, or any color you want. And I a lot of times do just do the three peeking out from behind something. If there's an empty space, I'll do the whole flower. And I am filling in the center with white as well so that I can get a yellow center in there. So a lot of them are just little three petals peeking out. If there's a big space, I do the whole flower. And I do like to go right on top of a branch. That breaks it up. I don't want you to see all these branches perfectly well. This is a great way to break them up. I'm not being so careful that I um, am not touching. I like to touch the other flowers, go over them. If I cover a leaf, that's okay. Nice to have that overlapping little bit. And just throw them on there wherever you want. This is not something to think about too much. It's not brain surgery. It's just fun. So just kind of go ahead and add them wherever you wish. It's, I know it's busy. It's a very busy painting. Lots of little elements. I think that's some of the appeal, though. And the Tree of Life subject I love. So um, that's always a great one. And like I said, you just do what you like for these. I'll throw a few more on. You might always see something later and go back a little bit. But now you've seen how they're done. And now I just, just dry that brush off. You don't have to wash it. Go into your yellow, and you can just pop your centers in. I'm using the goldy color, but whatever. You, you could do a different color center, too. You could have orange. You could do whatever you want. You're the boss of yourself. I'm not your boss. So do whatever you want. I'll guide you there, but I'd like to see you have your own take on things. And that comes if you feel like, oh, well, I, I'm just not sure what I would do. That's okay, too. You can follow along exactly as we do. And uh, eventually you're going to get some ideas. And it's a nice idea to have a little sketchbook, maybe, a little mixed media pad. You can sketch in if something catches your eye or you have an idea. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just sketch it out. You can uh, research online on Pinterest and on Google and get some ideas, save them up, and you can start putting together paintings of your own. I'm always here to help you with that, too, if you need some guidance. We'll do some sketching in the group. I do a lot of sketching and, and um, little watercolor uh, sketches and just sketching. It helps with your drawing, and it keeps you keeps your mind busy. And it's great when you travel because I do love to sketch when I travel. I, I take a million photographs like you all do, and they sit in my camera roll. But if I sketch something, I get such a feel for place and I guess I remember that. I look at that photo or that photo of me. I take photos of the sketches and then sketch the sketches and I get an immediate sense of where I was, the sounds, the smell. It just is amazing to have those little treasures when you come back. They're the best little souvenir you could you could bring home. Okay. Another little tip if you wanted to on this, if we left it more black and you wanted to just paint in like initials, you know, a little hard or something, that's awful cute. 
So this is pretty well finished, except for those little spirals in the back I want to show you. So a little close up of all of the little flowers. Very loose, not perfect. Look at this one. You can see the black of the trunk through. Doesn't matter. It could stay as is if you like it. I have to, of course, add one more touch. Same brush, same spiral shape. I'm doing it very, very lightly on top of each color in a lighter shade. So for instance, um, I'm gonna grab some white for the ivory. You're not even going to be able to probably see it on camera and I'm only doing it where I can see it. I'm not going into the tree at all with any of this. It's just around the bottom and the outside edge and I'm just doing that same spirals like we did with the tiny flowers and kind of like what we did with the branches. This is just mirroring that shape again and I'm keeping my paint really watered down. I want you to hardly see it. It's just like a little pattern in the background. I will do all of this where I have um, empty space and then I'll show you how you can't really even see it, but it's there. Can you see it just vaguely and the camera's not the best, but. So because I did the white there, I'm gonna move over say, and I'll go to the blue. I just wanna take the blue I used, mix it with white, so I've just got a very light blue. I want it very close to that shade. You might not know what it looks like until you put it on the paint, on the painting. If it's too dark or bright, you can, and you don't like it, just wipe it right off. But if it works, go right ahead. You don't know sometimes how you actually get this color on here. And so I am just going, and this is perfect. It's just a little shade lighter than what's on there. It is disguising my streaky paint so I don't have to do a second coat. And it's just given a little bit of interest. I'll put a few up here. You, you can't really, those are standing out a little bit bright, but they're going to um, fade because it's very watery. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go over here to the green that I used. Um, I don't want it to be minty green, so I'm going to add a little yellow and make it a little bit of a lighter green. Let's see what this looks like. And see, so you don't even see that. So I need to go back and add some white and maybe go with the minty green. Let's see what it looks like. It is a little trial and error sometimes with painting. Yep, that's going to be better. I'm going to get a little lighter. I want to see it, but barely. There, that's going to work. So after all, the little bit of a mint green did not, didn't, isn't bad. It works. I'm going to go on and paint a few other things this weekend. It's a good weekend for me. I have cleared my schedule a little bit. So if you want to be notified, like I said, put put up for that text message and I'll just put that number up again real quick. I think I have it a little bigger here somewhere. Do I do do do? Yeah. There. I'm going to leave that up for a minute while I do this. And if you would like to join in on me uh, this weekend, uh, watch me paint a little more, I will. And I will promise to remember to send the text out. I'm so bad. I'm sorry. You guys are, this is a brand new uh, app for me. And I just got to get used to sending that when I go live. And thanks for your patience and understanding because I know it's been a little kind of crazy journey with the tech stuff but see it's just light and i don't know what it doesn't add something do you guys think it adds a little something i really do same exact thing over here yellow with a little white orange with a little white and that's what we're going to do um to finish this guy off so let me find my paint is getting a little contaminated but i'm going to get a little bit of a white here with that yellow i don't want to get any more white out but if i can scoop some off of there without getting the blue mixed in there we go. Yep, that works. Like I said, it's very subtle. If it doesn't show, you could almost, almost go to just white on that yellow. Isn't it sort of blends the colors a little bit too for me? And we don't really need it up there. We go to the orange with the little bit of white with orange. You might have to succumb and get some. I'm going to have to get a tiny bit more white out. I usually put too much paint, and I do, as you can see on this palette. You could probably paint five of these paintings. I try to be a little less, and then it looks like not enough. So I'm not very frugal with my paint. Okay. So this is just that light orange mixed with a little white. And then when I do these spirals, I switch it up. I go, plop my brush down, go to the left, go to the right. It's Some are teeny, some are big. Um, 
and this is mostly the red, so I'm going to, I don't, I'm going to, I'm not even going to rinse my brush off because I can go right over to the red with a little white. I don't want it to be too light. I don't want it to be too pink, but let's see. Yeah, I don't know. That's too pink. Did you see that thumb action? That's, uh, that's all I remember about, not all I remember about, but as a kid going to church and my father lining us all up in the, Pew, and we'd all get the thumb, the wet and the thumb, the, the wet thumb, getting the dirt off our face because we were probably playing in the dirt before church. I might just go into that light orange that we had, and I think that's going to work for the red bits. Yeah, let's use that color that we were already using. I think I'll carry it right across. Just a light orange. It just didn't. I just didn't want the pink for some reason. I wanted this color, kind of like a salmon color. Just that light orange and a little white. And we're ready to wrap this up pretty soon. And you guys could get on with your day. And uh, I do appreciate you popping in here and watching this morning. And do remember the replays out there. And on those of you watching the replay and painting, thank you for watching the replay and painting. And do post your pictures, post your um, finished paintings. And again, even if it's after the fact and you have a question, reach out and, and uh I can answer that for you. So here we go. What do you think? I think we'll call it done. Let me set it right there. Let me give this a little go. There. Okay. I think you guys can all see that, right? All right. Let me see. Hey, Pat. I will. Pat, text me at that number and you'll be on my list. And we'll connect now, too, in the new group and everything. So I'm excited um, about that. It's so fun to hear what everybody else is doing in the painting world. Um, hi, Marianne. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you. Sometimes I wonder if it's if it's like going to be helpful, and, and hopefully it is. So um, I appreciate the kind words, and I appreciate you guys popping on to watch when I go on in my crazy lives and my crazy tutorials and all my ideas. And uh, like I said, I, I'm going to put the description uh, in the description. I'm going to put the link to the membership if you want to be on my waiting list when I open in the fall. We are having a blast over there in the Cardis group. So hey, thank you guys. Let me um, let me say goodbye to you all and. Uh, appreciate you. I'm on my porch in Maine here and it's great when I'm painting up here because the light is so much better. When you see me painting in my studio at home, which studio is the corner of my basement and uh, the lighting here is a lot better. So anyways, let's see, how long did we take this morning? It's about an hour and a half, but we had a lot of chit chat and a lot of uh, waiting for things to dry. This is a pretty quick painting. I may pop on and do it some miniatures of it later too. So if you want to, I will text you this time and I appreciate your support and your kind words and your watching. Have a great weekend, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.